Pete the Wargamer here, back with another Flames of War painting tutorial. This time we'll be tackling some of the new German Fallschirmjäger, and we'll be using some of the paints from the Vallejo range to do so. Before we start painting, we first of all need to apply primer so that the later layers of paint adhere to the miniature's surface. It doesn't matter too much which colour you go for, but I have opted to use a mixture of Vallejo's grey and black airbrush primers to help paint the various mid-tones of the miniature. You'll also note that I'm painting my infantry in a batch of three models, which will be grouped together onto a single base. To make holding the small miniatures easier, I have attached them to a lollipop stick with a small bit of superglue. The first area that we're painting will be the trousers and webbing pouches, and for this, we'll be starting off with a base coat of a German field grey. As with all the base coats that I'll be painting in this video, you'll want to mix this paint in with some water in roughly equal quantities to make the paint easier to work with. Don't worry about getting perfect coverage with your first layer, as this is why we watered down our paint. After applying your first layer, allow the paint to dry before applying a second over the top. This layering technique will give a much smoother finish, whilst avoiding the possibility of obscuring details by applying the paint too thickly. Next up, we'll be tackling the splinter pattern of the jump smock and helmet covers, and for this we'll be starting off with the base coat of German Camo Beige. Continuing with the smocks, we'll next start to apply the camouflage pattern to them. We'll begin with some Luftwaffe Camo Green, and we'll apply some rough shapes with jagged edges over the base colour. To paint the brown areas of camouflage, we'll next be using some German Camo Medium Brown to paint some more patches around the green areas that we painted in the last step. You can also use this paint to base coat any bread bags or water bottles on your miniature as well. With the uniform's base colours completed, we can next move on to the reddish brown wooden areas, which include tool handles and also the rifle stock. And for this, we'll be applying a base coat of flat brown. The next base coat to apply is one of beige brown, and this will give us our base colour for the flesh areas. To paint any uncovered helmets, gas mask canisters and mess tins, we'll be applying some base coat of German camo dark green. Next, we'll be painting the black areas of the miniature, which include any black leather areas, such as the boots, and also any metal areas. However, instead of using a black paint, we'll use the very dark German grey instead. This is to allow the later wash to create some definition between the recessed and raised areas. With all of the base coats completed, we can now start to apply some washes. These are great for boosting the visibility of details as they will flow into the recessed areas and create the appearance of shadows. The first wash we'll be applying in this way is sepia wash, but straight out of the pot it will be a little too strong, so you'll first need to water it down a little. Mix water into your wash until you have a consistency similar to what you see here. With your wash thinned, we next want to apply it across any brown, flesh and tan areas of the model. Sepia wash is much more subtle and will not darken down these lighter coloured areas quite as much as black wash would. Once dried, you will find that these details are, will stand out much more than they did before. Perfect for the smaller scale miniatures such as these. The next wash to apply is black wash, thinned in the same manner as before. This time we'll be applying it to the various shades of grey and green areas of the model, such as the field grey uniform, helmet and equipment. Once the washes have dried, we now want to add some highlights to help improve the level of detail. To do this, lightly drag the tip of a thin brush along the raised edges. This will create a small line of lighter paint along these areas, helping to improve both depth and definition. We'll start off by using stone grey to begin highlighting the jump smock, the black leather areas and any other parts of the uniform that we painted with German field grey. Thinning down the paint with just a little water this time should make this task easier, as the flow of paint should be much smoother than if you use it straight from the bottle. To maintain the reddish-brown hue of the wooden weapon stock and tool handles, apply a highlight of beige-brown. Next, we want to very carefully pick out the facial features and fingers using some flat flesh. For the uncovered helmets, gas mask canisters and mess tin, apply a thin line of German field grey along their edges. The final step is to add some of the metallic paint oily steel to the metal areas that we base coated with German grey earlier on. Using this paint we want to very carefully apply it along only the edges. A thin brush will help with this. The edge highlighting technique here will complete that dark metallic appearance. And here we have the completed Fallschirmjäger squad, which were attached to their base before I applied the simple basing scheme featured in my Flames of War basic basing tutorial. You can find a full list of all the paints I've used in this tutorial in the description below, along with any other equipment that I've used to create this video. 
If you enjoyed this video, please do let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe to be kept up to date with all of my latest videos. And so the only thing left to say is thanks for watching and goodbye.